KTRM7 is an anachronism, right? Wrong. With just 84 brake horsepower to play with, this Suzuki engine 7170 produces performance figures that would scare a really quick hot hatch, yet is affordable, economical, and as environmentally sound as any EV or hybrid. So much for the view that it's behind the curve. Maybe all sports cars should be built this way. A resolutely modern Caterham. It's a very different thing from a resolutely modern sports car, but in its own way, maybe that bit better. There's nothing quite like a Caterham 7, and for years, the entry point to the range was the brand's most affordable 160 model. Now, though, that's been superseded by this rather different variant, the 170. Now, its maker says that it's a distillation of everything the brand stands for in delivering accessible, simple, lightweight sports cars. We'll see. Caterham has long believed in the credo of efficiency and effectiveness through lightweight and simplicity. And this 170 model, powered by a tiny Suzuki engine, shows that this philosophy never really gets old. Although you have just 84 brake horsepower to play with, this car is quicker than plenty of hot hatches, while being way more economical and greener. Plus, it offers a superior power to weight ratio. Sounds intriguing. Now, if you've never driven a Caterham before, it can initially feel a little overwhelming. Uh, compared to the rather synthetic feel of many sports cars, the 7 Experience is rather more organic. Uh, turn this saucer size steering wheel and you can see the front wheels respond beneath their cycle mud guards. Uh, hit a bump and you'll see the suspension at work. Drive down a country lane at 40 miles an hour and it'll seem as if you're about to make the jump to light speed. Uh, you will emerge juiced and with slightly shaky hands wondering at how such a full strength adrenaline hit can still be legal. But will the proper 7 experience be retained with an engine up front just 660cc in size? Well, if the car is bolted to is light enough, then yes. Holding true to the mantra that spawned the original 7 uh, to simplify and add lightness, the 7170 weighs a little over 440 kilos, which in part is thanks to the lightness of its turbocharged Suzuki power plant. Okay, it only produces 84 brake horsepower and 160 newton meters of torque, but there's a rorty engine note, and because of the feather-like curb weight, there's an impressive power to weight ratio in excess of 170 brake horsepower per tonne, and that means that uh, the 0 to 62 miles an hour sprint can be achieved in just 6.9 seconds, and top speeds can exceed 100 miles an hour, although you would have to be brave to manage that. Complementing the 170's favourable power to weight ratio is its marrying of a 155 section tyre and live rear axle suspension, which should enable drivers of most capabilities to extract the full potential from this Caterham's mechanical configuration. Uh, everything else is pure seven. The uh, steering is weighty but communicative, and the brakes have the ability to hang you off your belt. Traction control, well, that is down to your right foot. The 170 not only represents the brand's lightest 7 produced to date, but measuring 1470 mils in width, it's 105 millimeters narrower than anything else in the current range, and that makes it the smallest 7 as well. There are several features that appear on the 7170 which haven't been on previous production models, including new alloy wheels, rear LED lights, and a smarter stripe design. Otherwise, it's a familiar seven recipe here. While this Caterham might have the ability to embarrass a Porsche 911 on a twisty road or racetrack, it can't hope to compete with a lardy sports coupe when it comes to practicality. This is not the kind of car to pick up the weekly shop in. And no, you can't have a radio. Now, although ergonomics have been improved quite significantly in recent years, uh, this cabin still resembles a throwback to the 1970s with a fiddly pop fit roof, some rather endearingly idiosyncratic minor controls and space for two rather slim-hipped occupants. If you're on first-name terms with the employees in your local KFC, you might well need to make sure you fit. 
or go for the optional large chassis model, uh, which is 250 millimeters longer, 110 mils wider, and 25 mils taller. Despite its rather basic look and feel, the 7 has been developed over many years and Caterham have ironed out the niggling faults due to a very close relationship with the owners. Yes, the cars may be quirky, but there's actually very little to go wrong and the fundamentals are tried and tested. Build quality in the conventional sense of soft feel plastics and doors that thunk shut are, well, they're a non-issue here. Far more important is the ability to do 40 laps of brands and then drive home without missing a beat. That's where caterums are utterly unbeatable. Prices for the 7170 start from around £25,000. That's a big chunk less than the other variants in the range, uh, which all use a four-cylinder, two-litre Ford Duratec unit. As usual with Caterham 7s, this one's available as either a complete kit or factory built. Buyers can pick from two packs, the Road Ready 170S or the stripped back, more track-focused 170R. The 170S is for the more laid-back driver. It comes with a five-speed gearbox and a road suspension pack. Equipment features include 14-inch silver Juno alloy wheels, a full windscreen and weather gear including a hood and side screen, plus leather seats and a Momo steering wheel. Uh, there's a choice of four paint colours. If you're choosing this car exclusively for track days, though, then you'll want the more circuit-focused 170R variant, which has a stiffer sport suspension pack, a limited-slip differential, and is identifiable by the black finish applied to those 14-inch Juno wheels. Inside, there are composite race seats, a four-point race harness, a Momo steering wheel, and a carbon fibre dashboard. Again, there are four paint options. Now, with both variants, the prices being asked here represent good value in our book, although you will have to regard the 7 as a second, or as is frequently the case, a third car. There are, however, a large and loyal section of Caterham's clientele that take a rather perverse pride in the 7 being their only vehicle and stick with the cars come rain or shine. For these people, a windscreen is a rather fey luxury item. Caterhams are among the least costly sports cars to run. Uh, because of their inherent lightness, these cars are very easy on things like tyres and brakes. With less forces acting on them and with less work to do, the materials just last longer. The other benefit of not lugging around a bunch of extraneous kilograms is economy. Even a rather spirited drive in a 7 will often see average fuel economy in the region of 30 to 35 miles per gallon. The 170 takes that efficiency uh, formula stage further. It's one of Caterham's most environmentally friendly cars to date. Both ULEZ and Euro 6 compliant, this model is the company's lowest emission 7. With a CO2 figure of 109 grams per kilometre, it's even greener than some hybrid vehicles, and that includes Toyota's Yaris. The other big factor that reduces the pence per mile ownership figure is residual values. Caterhams attract a cult following, and if you were to buy a 7170 three years down the road, it would probably still be worth over 65% of its original price. That's cheap motoring by any stretch of the imagination. A cult following also includes an active community of owners, so finding the best deals on upgrades, parts and insurance is usually only a few mass clicks away. Several specialist insurers will offer attractive rates on sevens. Uh, they know that owners are often more responsible, committed and knowledgeable than with other marks. Mileages on sevens also tend to be modest. Caterers don't have an insurance group as such. Uh, they come under the specialist bracket. Servicing intervals are every 3,000 miles for this Suzuki-powered seven or every six months. Uh, Caterham has only five dealers, Gatwick, Silverstone, Oakmere, Williams and Crazy Horse. Most owners tend to drive themselves to one of these, but uh, collection may be available for a fee. The Caterham 7 ought to have been superseded long ago. Something smarter and cleverer should have consigned this design into history. 
that's usually the way of automotive product development. But just occasionally, a formula is so inherently right that successive generations of cars only serve to underline its relevancy. Such is the case with the 7. And this Suzuki engine 170 model shows that the 7 is a roadster that, if anything, is more in tune with the times now than it was 30 years ago. This is a car that's fun even when you're not posting huge numbers on the clocks and one which is economically and environmentally sound, yet which nevertheless retains a steely focus with drive capability that refuses to be emasculated. So many sports cars today nanny their drivers, offering a dumbed-down synthetic version of all the visceral emotion that should accompany a proper roadster. Caterham doesn't subscribe to that view. Long may that continue.